Hello, I'm Springs Insanity, without the sanity, which shouldn't be surprising to anyone. Uh, I'm gonna start a new series, kind of like Diagnostics and Repair. It's actually exactly like Diagnostics and Repair. I'm gonna take blasters from every source I get them from if they have issues or really just flat out don't work at all. And I'm going to fix them because I love repairing blasters and finding the weird issues they have. You know, someone shoved a Lego in it, there's dead bugs, and I just love laughing at that stuff. And it's so much fun to me. And the good thing about this is if you happen to have the same blaster I'm repairing that has the same problem, you can use that to your benefit. The first two episodes are going to consist of blasters I acquired in Nerf Hunt 8. Half of them are going to be in the first episode. They are all light up and full of corrosion. And the second episode is going to be blasters that actually have some interesting problems, whether they're really weak or just flat out do not work at all. And the first thing in this episode that was not in the thumbnail, and I already fixed it, so that doesn't really matter. This was horribly corroded, missing the battery door. It had zebra tape on it. And I got a little excited with the, the vinegar, and I'm glad I opened it up to clean the vinegar out because I found this. I have a picture of it. I'm so glad. A marble-sized chunk of corrosion had formed on one of the, the leads. So I dunked that side of the battery tray in vinegar, left it there for 10 minutes. That's how long it took to fully dissolve. And that is the worst corrosion I've ever seen. I have yet to see even worse corrosion in some of these blasters here. And after I cleaned that out, I threw some fresh Amazon Basics in there, and it works just fine. I'm not sure what I'll use that for, because it is missing the battery door. And speaking of batteries, I have started collecting batteries that are weird brands that you definitely shouldn't use, and the weird brand ones are far more likely to corrode. Here are the batteries that were in the light. I thought they were all Duracell, but then I noticed one was weird. CVS Alkaline. Don't mix battery brands, that's a bad idea. And I've got some weird ones I've collected. I have yet to find Kirkland and Rite Aid again. And I have uh, Radio Shack, Enercell, Energizer, and when I say bad case of Energizer, I really do mean that. Utilitech, this battery is actually still good for some reason. Smart Living, this one is rusted out for some reason. And then my favorite, Duracell Quantum. They want you to think these batteries are better, they are so much worse than regular Duracell. These die in like one day. The first blaster in here is a yellow and gray Night Finder. I do know it's corroded. I have to get it apart to get easier access to the leads in here, but it also has a worn out lens and the seal's kind of bad so I can fix those while I'm in here. Other than that, this thing's in great shape. Interesting. Okay, this is what was shaking around in here. I felt something shaking around. It looks like a little bit of hot glue from the factory. Interesting. This orange piece was sprayed black. I don't know why that is, but they did do that. I can't believe back then they actually painted parts on the inside that you couldn't even see, yet they can't even paint both sides of the external shell. The corrosion in here is not that bad. I probably didn't even need to take it apart. It's only on this piece right in there. I could just take the lead out by itself, so I'm going to kind of dunk that in here for a minute. It's not sizzling very much. That sump pump is making a very disgusting sound. Imagine listening to that every day. There we go. The light works just fine. You can barely see it on the table with the lighting in here. And the seal is better. If you want to know how to fix the seal, it's just Teflon tape or even duct tape under the O-ring will work. Not too much, but some. Uh, that should work. Works great, awesome. I forgot to fix the lens, but if you want to figure out how to do that, I restored a Night Finder a while ago. I'll try to put the, the link in the video. If not, I'll put it in the description or the comment section somewhere. But the lens in that Night Finder was really stripped out. I could shake it and the whole thing would shake around. It was horrible. Next, I got three fireflies that were all horribly corroded. One even has a really rusty lead, and I'm going to save that one for last because I think that one is the least likely to work. So I'm going to determine which one that is and then fix the other two first. These things sure have had a fair share of corrosion and a lot of scuffs. You see all those little black marks all over it? Well, there's a way to fix that and I'm gonna go over that real quick. You get a Mr. Clean Magic Eraser. It does make the plastic a little blurry but you can polish that with some metal polish and if you have a Dremel use a polishing wheel 
they're pretty much gone. There's some pieces of this left because this thing's in horrible shape, but see the battery compartment here. It's not that bad. This one's probably the least corroded one. It's actually not on this side of the battery tray. It's only on this side, so it's not even fully corroded. Yep. Yep. It'll take a second. That one does work. Very nice. Here's the next one. Lots of scuffs on this as well. Actually, more than the other one. And a lot of scuffs and not a lot of paint wear tell me these things had a lot of indoor play. If they were being taken outside and dropped on um, hard concrete like a stone patio or driveway, there'd be a lot more paint missing from here and back here. Let's check this one out. Yeah, that's a lot worse. It's definitely on both sides and it's blue. What causes that? I actually don't know what causes corrosion to be blue instead of white. There's a ton right down in there. I might actually have to take this apart and remove the leads and dunk them in vinegar. And I don't want to have to take these apart because there's a ton of screws and you got to pop the solvent weld in the stock because they're solvent welded together. Oh boy. All right. Oh my God, you're kidding. It was not solvent welded together at all. Okay, perfect. This is a separate piece, so I can just dunk the entire thing in my vinegar. I might actually need a bigger container of vinegar for this one. Here's what happened. One of the leads actually broke off, so I ended up melting the plastic all the way down to the metal part inside where the lead used to be, and then just putting some solder over that, and it holds the lead on just fine. Let's see if this works now. Yes, it does work. Fantastic. So if you think the light in your Firefly is burned out, I would definitely check the little contact area behind the trigger. I think that is far more likely to be broken than the light is to be burned out because those leads are very fragile. So definitely see if they're both there. If they're not, you could probably make a lead. They're very simple. It's just a little piece of metal. The last one. The third firefly. Let's see. Wow, that is really bad. This is the worst one. You can see what I'm talking about. That really rusted out contact right there. This is really awful. I'm definitely going straight to opening this up. Oh yeah. Oh my. Wow. That's violent. Oh, wow, that works. I am pleasantly surprised that I didn't think this one would work because it was rusted out, but that took way less time to fix than the the previous one. Oh, there we go. All three of these fireflies will turn on and flash. The night finder works. This light that's not in the thumbnail works. I managed to clean the majority of the scuffs off of the fireflies. So um, there's a little bit left on them, but that is fine. All right, that's it until the next episode, I guess.